Welcome everybody to the video. I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas and we got a we got a snowy a snowy map for a Rengar guy. That's how we're gonna do it today. So <clears throat> holy shit. So I don't wanna touch too much on Rengar is clear, it's pretty self explanatory. Well not self explanatory, it's pretty simple. It's basically you just start red, go Krugs, go Raptors, finish your clear. I've tried going for the red and then going straight to my enemy's blue and taking that and it doesn't really work too well I don't it it kind of puts me behind and if they go take my blue then it really wasn't worth anything I just lost HP off of my clear and I don't I don't know it's I have to save smite for it too it's not it's not pretty so I'd prefer to just do my full clear clear my red Krugs Raptors Wolves blue Gromp scuttle if I have enough HP and time and then go back so by then you should have about 23 CS and when you go back you'll be able to buy your stalkers not warrior obviously you'll be able to buy stalkers and boots so if you have enough if you did the clear properly if you did everything there then you'll have enough gold for stalkers and boots maybe a pot or uh, a ward but it's those are the two main things you want to get with your first back are the stalkers blade and your boots so now we'll talk about Rengar's abilities so you know what you can and can't do with this champion and what makes him different than other champions. And we'll start with his passive, Unseen Predator. The definition is, while in a brush, Rengar leaps at his target with his basic attack. So basically there's this ring around you and if there's an enemy within that ring, then you can jump to them and basic attack them. Minions, monsters, as long as it's an enemy, it could be a ward, it could be a plant. It's As long as you can target it, you can jump to it. Now, the second part is Rengar's abilities build ferocity. Upon reaching full ferocity, his next ability becomes empowered and grants him movement speed on cast, but he instantly loses all ferocity if he leaves combat. So basically, if you leave combat for 6 seconds, you'll see a little timer on your passive. That'll show you how much longer you have to keep your stacks. If you are out of combat for too long, then all of your stacks will diminish at once. They won't periodically go down, they'll all just disappear at once. Now the third part to Rengar's passive is killing enemy champions awards trophies on Rengar's bone tooth necklace, permanently increasing the atta his attack damage. So you need to kill all five people on their team to truly get full five stacks off of your bone tooth. This will grant you a ton of AD, it used to be more until they nerfed them, but still the, the AD it's not, if you go full AD Rengar it's not hard to get 480 AD because of this unseen predator passive. Next up we have the ability you're going to be pressing the most in any game and probably throughout your lifetime of playing Rengar, his Q, Savagery. The definition is Rengar slashes all enemies in an arc before piercing all enemies in a line. Casting this outside the max range moves Rengar a short distance in that direction and ferocity effect deals increased damage. So basically you're going to, sw you're going to swoop in an arc and then slash right down the middle where you pointed. And if you aim further away, if you aim pretty far away then you'll also dash forward a little bit so you can use it as a little bit of uh, if they're really low you can use it as an execute it's not as reliable early on but late game you can if somebody is really that far away and you can't catch up to them which you probably still should be able to then you can just use your Q dash to just stab them and kill them instantly now obviously the like I just said the empowered or full ferocity ability on this is it just deals more damage and you also get another Q so this is what you're gonna want to empower almost all the time if you are not in any other trouble or you need to gap close, then this is your damage dealer. This is the 1v1 empower master. You empower this in any 1v1, well, almost any 1v1, and you just burst them until they, like, very quickly. You, you jump out of the bush or you jump out of your ulti and you cube, and since it was empowered, then you also get another Q right after that. So you can double Q, you can... And since your uh, auto attack resets quicker with this too, so you Q auto Q and their health is just gone instantly. Alright, so now we move on to Rengar's W, Battle Roar. Rengar lets out a Battle Roar, damaging enemies and healing for some of the recent damage he has taken. So basically, you're going to heal 100% of the damage taken in the last 1.5 seconds against minions and monsters, which makes it really nice for jungling, since you get, you get more health back from clearing and you don't have to empower W to get health back. And then against champions though, you only heal for 50% of the, the damage taken in the last 1.5 seconds, so you kind of want to hold your W instead of just pressing it as soon as you go in. It makes it so you actually have to time your W nicely. You can see there's a gray bar showing how much you'll heal for if you use W right now. Now, 
Rengar's ferocity effect on his W is that he will remove the CC. So this is what made a lot of people really angry that Rengar gets a built-in QSS. But if he uses this empowered W, he sacrifices the insane burst damage that he'll get from his empowered Q. So it's kind of a little maybe somewhat balanced. So his third ability in his kit, if you don't count the passive, is his E, Bola Strike. Rengar throws at a Bola, slowing the first target hit for a short duration. So this one, this E, honestly, is... It's the ability that will get you killed in a 1v1 if you don't use it at the beginning. What you're going to want to do is use this while you're in a bush, while somebody's walking to you. If they don't see you and you can see them, you can line up your E so perfectly. You can throw it and then jump, and if you really want, you can throw it mid-air. That's usually the strat, is to throw it while you're in mid-air, so it'll hit the enemy when you land on them, and it will deal damage. Instead of having to stop your movement and stop your autos while you're you're attacking them just to throw your E. The slow is also nice to catch up on them, but don't underestimate this ability. Late game, this ability will deal a third of a Squishy's health. Uh, this will deal a third of a Jinx's health in damage when you hit level 18. This, this ability is actually really strong. Now the ferocity effect is that it will root the target. The target will be rooted in place, which is good, but it's not the hardest CC since they can still auto use abilities. You're not going to want to use this in a 1v1 against a melee champ. But if you're playing against uh, somebody like a Vayne and you don't have Flash, this is probably your best bet to catch up to them. And finally, the greatest ability in his kit is his ult, Thrill of the Hunt. Rengar's predatory instincts take over, camouflaging him and revealing the nearest enemy champion in, the, in a large radius around him. During Thrill of the Hunt, Rengar gains movement speed and he can leap to the tracked enemy for a guaranteed critical strike, even without being in a brush. So this is the bane of people's existence. The fact that Rengar gets a guaranteed crit off of his jump from his ulti makes him insanely good for burst. Even better than what he was before. People, Rengar mains will tell you that they don't like the new Rengar. I love the new Rengar. Rengar's crit off of this scales so well with IE. You can deal a thousand damage crit when you have IE and you're level 15 or 16. So getting that guaranteed off of your ult is a pretty much 100% one shot, and if it's not, it's a guaranteed flash heal from the ADC or Zanya's from the mid laner. This this ability works so well. It's not as good since you had to you don't get to see everybody on their team, but it's better since you get the crit strike. People hate the new auto crit strike, but to that I say. Why is Yasuo allowed to have a 100% crit strike with only two items? Hmm? Let's worry about him before we worry about Rengar, shall we? Now, this is the part where some of you might be interested in. Do we build Rengar AD? Do we build him tank? Do we build him AP? I honestly haven't really done AP at Rengar, I don't think at all yet this season. So I can't really tell you if that's any good, but I can tell you that tank Rengar is not good. People say that tank Rengar is the way to go with Rengar, and I couldn't disagree more. Basically, my build with Rengar is obviously finishing Warrior first and then building your Ionians since you won't be able to finish any of your other items before you can finish Ionians. So, you finish your Ionians, you go back, and you you buy a BF Sword if possible so that this can build into a Duskblade or an IE. If you have enough for a, Dusk, for a BF Sword, then buy that, but if you don't have enough, buy the Serrated Dirk and go for the, the Duskblade first. If you have enough for the BF Sword, then just buy that and then you have more flexibility whether you want to go IE or Duskblade first and if then when you come back if you don't have enough for the Dirk then just go for the Cloak of Agility and build IE first then you're going to want to build whichever one of the two you didn't build first so go so an example build would be me going Warrior first then my Ionians then Duskblade then IE but you could go IE then Duskblade either way works well I think Duskblade go, going Duskblade first works better but that's just personal preference off of doing this build for a while now. Now, then what you're going to want to do is probably build Phantom Dancer so you can get the attack speed and also extra crit strike. It just makes it so then you have 50% crit strike and you attack more. It makes it nice for split pushing and 1v1 against tanks. So, especially if they have an enemy Yasuo or Talon or somebody of the assassin types, maybe even Zed, it makes it so that you're able to 1v1 them a lot nicer, you get more crits, you get more attacks in, but it really helps with tanks. So if I'm going in 1v1ing a Renekton, I'm able to attack him more and probably kill him quickly. 
Now the last item is pretty situational. You could go anywhere from Maw. You don't need a QSS. Please don't go QSS. You could go anywhere from Maw to Death Stance to Essence Reaver for more crit and damage to Static Shift for more burst and attack speed to get the split push. It's really up to you what that last item is. But once you have full build, when you get enough gold, sell your sell your warrior and buy a ravenous hydra you could also put that ravenous hydra in as your situational item and then build something else in instead of warrior warrior is good but it's not as good as some other items you do get the true damage smite but i'd probably rather just have an essence reaver over it anyway since i get more crit and damage now the last thing i want to touch on is sort of how you will be playing rengar so basically these are the, some things to remember is get fed by farming. You don't have to get fed by getting kills. Get fed by farming and then the kills will come naturally. You shouldn't look for that level 3 gank unless it is guaranteed there that you're level 3, they're level 2, and they are pushed up. Then you can go for it if you feel like you can. But if it's not there, just farm yourself up. Just get, get yourself fed. That's the second part too, is gank only when possible, don't force the ganks. If you're sitting in a bush and you're waiting for the enemy to push up, just start your recall and if they are not pushed up or they don't look like they're going to push up before the recall ends, take the back and buy your items unless obviously you've been sitting there without farming, then go farm. And now the third one is to throw your bow in midair, I talked about this with the when we were talking about his abilities, you're going to want to throw your bola in midair. It gets a little bit tricky when you're in your ulti, but a really good way to practice is by when is just when you see somebody walking towards you in a bush, then just E and jump to them right away. Just you can time it perfectly. You line it up, hit E, and then once he's about to throw it, then just auto attack and jump to him. Another one is to pop all squishies. This is what makes Rengar so satisfying. So, so satisfying. There's nothing greater than watching that enemy Ezreal flash, E, heal, and still die. It's beautiful. Another thing that's also really nice is seeing the ADC just flash because they have the, the little Rengar eyes over their head. It's, uh, it's very, very satisfying. And the third best part about popping squishies is like you may have seen in the, the 34 kills Rengar video is when they just give up and stand there and do nothing. It's beautiful. The last part I have here is AS for split push. AS is attack speed, so get attack speed for split push. If you feel like you can't really win team fights, even if you are participating in getting two to three kills, but your teammates die too quickly, because you're probably not gonna be peeling for them, honestly, then build like build the static instead, unless you need any sort of tank like Black Cleaver or Ravenous. But build that attack speed and just take down the turrets, especially if you have Glimpse of the Void from the Rifty buff. Holy, you walk up to a turret and hit it once and it chunks it for like a sixth of its health. And if you have minions there, you have like 2.0 2 attack speed. You can take that thing quickly. You can take the inhibs insanely fast. You can solo an inhib when you only have Phantom Dancer. It's not that hard. So once you get the static for attack speed, you should be able to solo the turret and the inhib with only maybe the three caster minions in the back. It's extremely good. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video and again Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. But I have also want to mention that there is a, a link for this in the description to the Lol King guide that I made. I made the, a guide for this on Lol King. It's not completely finished but it's like almost done. I might add a couple things to it here and there if you guys want me to, but it's probably just going to stay the way it is unless I get any requests to, to change it. So if you guys want a more physical version of it where you can really visualize everything that you saw in this video, then you can go take that, this, that link to that video and sort of get an idea of what I'm thinking. So as the only other thing I want to say, sorry I'm stuttering, but the only other thing I want to say is I'm sorry for not uploading a lot. I've just been really busy, especially with Christmas. I, I'm sure you guys can understand that everything has been kind of hectic, especially around Christmas time. You're always visiting relatives, but nonetheless, I hope you guys had a good time and didn't mind my absence for very long. So without, or with that being it, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.